Hello, let us do some 2.6 notes, graphs of rational functions. So rational functions are a ratio of polynomials. And so a rational function, f of x, will have a numerator function and a denominator function and both of those are polynomials. So this is a polynomial that's in the numerator. That's why I put it as n of x, and this is a polynomial in the denominator. So an example of a rational function would be, let's say, 4x cubed plus 2x, that's a polynomial, divided by 7x squared minus 8. That's a polynomial. Or, a very simple version, f of x is equal to 1 over x. This is our basic rational function, right, from our 12 basic. Um, if we think about that function, just of our 12 basic functions, we know it looks like this little guy. Hopefully you remember that. And so a lot of our functions in this section will kind of be based on that same idea. If we think about the domain of these rational functions, well, it, it is a function that has a fraction. And so this is back to the idea that we cannot divide by zero. Right? That would make us go to math hell, basically. And so the domain will be everything except whatever makes the denominator equal to zero, right? That's not new. We did that all, uh, you guys have done that all throughout this class so far. So there's a couple other characteristics of rational functions I want to talk about, and I'm first going to talk about an asymptote which is kind of like a line. I'm going to put it in quotes because it's not technically a line that a function approaches. Um, but it never touches. And I'm actually going to put an asterisk here because I do kind of want to talk about that in a moment. And there's three main types. There is horizontal. There's vertical and slant asymptotes. And the asterisk is specifically about horizontal asymptotes. Remember, we've talked about this before. Horizontal asymptotes tell us about the end behavior of a function, meaning the limit as x approaches infinity or the limit as x approaches negative infinity. And so it's really only talking about when x is getting big or small. So a function can cross a horizontal asymptote if x is kind of in the middle, but it will never do it at the ends, at the x is really big or really small. I will never cross a vertical or a slant asymptote. How do we find asymptotes? Well, let's think for a moment about what our function is right now, right? We have a numerator and a denominator, and both of these things are polynomials. So I'm going to say the degree of our numerator is n, the degree of our denominator is m. If we consider vertical asymptotes, vertical asymptotes are going to be found by finding the zeros of our denominator. These are the places that are not included in the domain of our function. You can have multiple vertical asymptotes. It's possible to have, well, however many zeros the denominator has would be the number of vertical asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes are slightly more complicated. For horizontal asymptotes, you are going to compare the degree of your numerator and denominator. 
So there's three options here. Either the degrees will be the same, n is equal to m, the numerator, oops, sorry, that should have been two, the numerator will have a smaller degree than the denominator, or the numerator will have a greater degree than the denominator. Let's think of the one that we probably would know, which is this middle one. Well, how do we know it if we think about 1 over x, our basic function, right? It looks like that. Sorry, that was kind of bad. Where does this function have a horizontal asymptote? It has a horizontal asymptote at the line y equals 0. So if the numerator has a smaller degree than the denominator, just like our basic function, the horizontal asymptote will be the line y equals 0. Again, how would we remember this? I would think of your function from our 12 basic functions. All right, what about if the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of our denominator? In this case, our horizontal asymptote will be the line y equals the leading coefficient, coefficient of your numerator divided by the leading coefficient of your denominator. And don't you worry, we will do examples of all three of these in class. Last but not least, if the numerator has a higher degree than the denominator, if n is greater than m, you will not have a horizontal asymptote. There will be no horizontal asymptote. There might be a slant, a slant asymptote. How will I know if there is a slant asymptote? This will occur when the degree of our numerator is exactly one more than the degree of our denominator. A slant asymptote, hopefully as it's kind of sounds, would be an asymptote that would kind of come on a slant. So it would be like the line y equals mx plus b, whatever the slope and y-intercept are. And you'll calculate some the slant asymptote by doing the division. And I'm putting this in quotes because um, I'll show you. We'll, we'll do an example in class, but if I had like f of x is equal to 5x squared plus 9 over 13x, Notice the numerator is exactly one more than the denominator. This has a degree of 2. This has a degree of 1. 2 is 1 greater than 1. So we would do this division. I would take 5x squared plus 9 divided by 13x. And again, we will do examples, more concrete ones in class. But right now we're just, uh, we're just getting the content down. All right, and last but not least, one other thing to mention is holes. Holes are essentially um, a break in the graph. They are a place where the function doesn't exist. It would literally be a hole in the graph, and we'll see it on Desmos. It's kind of cool. Um, holes occur when the numerator and the denominator share a factor. Holes occur when a numerator and our denominator share a factor. So these are the notes you need for class on Monday and Tuesday, November 3rd and 2nd. <laughs> I don't know why I did that backwards. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day.